Hi, and welcome to this week's look at the major news stories that have affected the market in the past week and those that may continue to rumble on. And today we're going to take a look at the S&P 500, see how that's been performing, uh, especially versus some analyst expectations. Uh, secondly, we'll take a look at how the dollar's been performing. Seems a little range bound at the moment in anticipation of some major figures out this week. Thirdly, we'll take a look at silver, see how that's been performing against gold in, in recent weeks. And we'll finish off with Microsoft which had a pretty good end to last week and start to this week. So, back to the S&P 500 and some of the latest analyst forecasts, obviously with FX Open, that's traded under the, the name USSPX 500 Mini. So, three months of spring, we've seen a 3.5% increase in the value of the S&P. Not bad at all, but not quite as good as the start of the year. In fact, in the first two months of the year, it was up 7%. 0.8%. That suggests there may be a little bit of a slowdown in the AI rally, as it's being called. Stock market participants are also concerned that Fed rates may well remain pretty high. So what could happen? Well, some of the latest analyst forecasts, according to Market Watch and Business Insider, vary quite differently. Uh, JP Morgan believes that the growth potential has been exhausted and the market may well hit a wall in the coming months, preventing further growth. And they're sticking by the end of year prediction or target of 4,200. They had that back in December 23 and as yet that's not been revised. So quite a way below where we are. Wells Fargo, well, they're saying that it's too optimistic to expect record highs ahead of the US elections in November. However, they do say that further growth related to those election results looks quite likely in 2020. 25, and they've got an end of year 2025 target of 5,700, so above where we are now. Capital Economics, they said it could continue to rise if Treasury yields fall, which we have seen a little bit of, and momentum from the AI rally remains strong. And they're in fact looking at a target price for the end of year of 2025 of 6,500, but are anticipating a sharp fall a sharp correction of that in 2026. If we take a little look at the chart, what does that show us? Well, we are in an upward trend. That's the blue channel you can see. The price has moved from the upper half to the lower half of that channel, which is a bit of a sign of weakening bullish strength and that 5300 level may well act as resistance. Now, the upcoming rate decision on the 12th of May is going to be important. If we take a quick look at the chart again, the, the broad bullish candle on the 31st of May that we see with an arrow pointing towards it, closing near its highs indicates strong demand at the lower border or boundary of the channel. But that upcoming rate decision on the 12th will impact what happens. And if we are going to consolidate above the 5300 level, that is going to be absolutely key. So it could be a, either a fairly tight channel in terms of price movement up until that rate decision. Alternatively, we may see quite a bit of volatility, so don't forget your risk management techniques. Okay, next up, we're going to have a little look at the US dollar and how that's been faring. And it's pretty much range bound into ahead of the US employment data that's out, which will probably drive the markets one way or the other. Currency pairs have remained near their recent extremes, if you like, so far this week. We've had already this week US ISM manufacturing PMI data, which was worse than expected, 48.7 versus 49.8. Also had ADP employment report, which again, worse than expected, 152K versus 100 173k expected and the Bank of Canada cut its base rate by 0.25% to 4.75% this week. So what's happening in terms of a couple of the major pairs? Well, dollar against the Canadian dollar. The chart shows that's pretty much range brown one spot 3740 to one spot 3590 for, for circa four weeks or so now. Any appropriate news may well retest the one spot 3610 to one spot 3590 levels that we have seen. But what could that news constitute? Well, key events coming up Thursday at 3.30 p.m. That's GMT plus three. We've got initial jobless claims in the US. On Friday, also 3.30 GMT plus three non-farm payrolls are coming out from the US. These are going to be very, very important figures. And on Friday, we've again at 3.30, GMT plus three, we've also got the change in full employment for Canada. So all of those figures could well have an impact on the dollar against the Canadian dollar, as well as other pairs, of course. Take a quick look now at the euro dollar. 
our pre the ECB announcement on interest rates, which is due uh, Thursday 1.15pm London time, there is a very, very defined and clear expectation that it will be reduced by 0.25% to 4.25%. Now that is likely priced in already as it is so well publicised. And pre that announcement, we are near the high of one spot zero nine zero zero. Other elements of focus, if the ECB is already priced in, uh, Thursday at 12, that's GMT plus three again, we've got the German industrial production for April. Friday at 9 a.m. GMT plus three, we have the German trade balance. And also on Friday at 12, again GMT plus three, we have the Eurozone GDP for the first quarter. Obviously very, very important figures in terms of the euro and it'd be interesting to see if if you know the ecb leads the way leads ahead of the us should we say because canada have already done it in terms of cutting rates the chart on the daily time frame shows a piercing candle pattern from the 30th of may is clearly visible if one spot 0850 remains a support we may well see the price increase towards the one spot one one to one spot one zero sort of range so the figures over the next couple of days and into next week with the us fed rate decision key so do look out for that volatility again okay now we'll turn our attention to the commodity market see what's been happening there and the price of silver seems weaker than the price of gold at the moment precious metal prices have increased over the last couple of days as treasury yields have fallen back to the safe haven aspect of precious metals expectations are growing that fed rate cuts may begin as early as september of this year so that could well come into play but i think currently it's fair to say the market is focusing on the non-farm payroll data on employment data and other that are coming out over the next couple of days of Thursday and Friday, particularly the NFP data Friday 3.30 GMT plus three. Let's take a look at the little corresponding chart. So gold chart, that shows us that early Thursday, the price rose above $2,370 per ounce. We've not seen that sort of level since back on the 23rd of May. Meanwhile, the price of silver decreased 8% from the 29th of May to the 4th of June. Um, so the, the current price rise may be an attempt by the bulls to offset the bearish momentum um, during a period of which gold has remained relatively stable. Look specifically at the silver chart now, and that shows us that since March, there has been an upward trend in place that's shown by the blue channel. And in fact, on May the 17th, we said we might see a new attack on $30 an ounce. And almost immediately afterwards, it did exactly that. Following that breakout, it reached the upper boundary of the ascending channel at a point A. That you can see then it returned back to that key 30 dollar level there was then quite a rapid new peak which is labeled b but that was lower than the peak of a uh, which indicates you know a little bit of bearish sentiment creeping in uh, and that's a double top um, was formed around the 32 dollar mark it's also worth noting that the steepness of the ascending trend lines is decreasing that's been shown in green um, which would indicate a bit of a fall in demand so 30 dollars an ounce seems to be the top price people or investors want to pay at the moment and that 30 dollars and 80 cents is already showing some resistance so silver not faring quite as well as gold at the moment but certainly is an alternative as a safe haven so again one to keep your eyes on okay and we're going to finish up this week with a look at microsoft and their the shares have been quite up and down shall we say in the recent weeks or so but certainly a positive surge um, last Friday off the back of record yearly volumes. So Friday the 31st of May, there was almost 48 million shares traded on the NASDAQ in Microsoft. That's the highest volume since the start of 2024. In fact, the chart formed a hammer candle. It opened at 416.75, that's $416.75 a share. Mid-session actually fell below the 406, $406 per share level, but closed around the $415 dollars and 13 cents per share which is where the hammer candle formation comes in now from a fundamental perspective it's difficult to see why but i mean according to barons a significant incentive of investing in microsoft shares is the prospect of high dividend payouts taking a look at the chart we can see that the price is in the ascending channel having dropped to 406 dollars per share may well have activated some some stop losses there shifting the balance in the market quite a bit and that turnaround shows there was some demand there the monday price 
it was a pre-market was around sort of the median level in the channel and if Friday's bullish momentum continues the resistance may be encountered around the bearish gap that we can see at 424 dollars which it seems to be doing now at a slightly later in the week uh, seems to be in play that level as Wednesday we closed at 424 dollars and one cent but pre-market Thursday we're trading around the 423 dollar mark so that key resistance level could well already be affecting trading. So I think moving forward, as I say, the fundamentals aren't that clear. Um, good volumes obviously talk about high dividends. We are in that ascending channel, but I think a crucial driver over the coming week or so is going to be the Fed meeting on the 12th of June. Um, we've got the ECB this afternoon. Who knows what the Fed will do next week. Worth note though, tip ranks say the average price forecast for Microsoft in 12 months time is $491.90. So average, and it is an average forecast, saying there is still a little way to go with the Microsoft share price. But do keep your ears and eyes open for all of the data that's coming out in the next seven days. It's going to play a part in all markets. We wish you luck with your trading in the week ahead. Bye for now.